So pulmonary edema is uh, caused by infection also and non-infective also. Now, non-infective is more common, which includes cardiac causes, mostly cardiac, the cardiac congestive cardiac failure, or there is left ventricular failure. Sometimes, sometimes uh, right ventricular, but mostly left ventricular failure and cardiac failure leads to back pressure or back flow of the blood, and the blood starts blood starts oozing out the serum and and plasma into the lungs and then develops into pulmonary edema. This usually leads to the blockage of all those alveoli, which leads to decrease in the exchange of gases and thus it causes breathlessness and cough and pink color or uh, pink color sputum, which occurs. And the causes would be cardiac, congestive cardiac failure or kidney disease, CKD, chronic kidney disease, or sometimes infective, which includes viral myocarditis. Patients who are suffering from influenza B infection, influenza A, COVID or H1N1 infections tend to have this inflammation on the heart, the cardiac borders also, where the cardiac border includes the myocardium and the pericardium. And this infection can lead to the restriction of the cardiac the cardiac movement or the infection can cause inflammation in the car in the pericardium and the myocardium leading to viral or bacterial myocarditis or pericarditis or endocarditis this can itself cause a back pressure and cause the pulmonary edema to occur in the lungs as well pulmonary edema the patient will present with uh, this is usually seen in patients who have uh, not done a cabg or not gone for an angioplasty or post cabg also the patient would present with certain amount of uh, chest pain heaviness tightness so you have to differentiate from a cardiac asthma and a bronchial asthma and that is a point where a pulmonologist and a cardiologist work together uh, in different opds of course to find out the root cause so usually the pulmonary edema will present with a cough a pinkish sputum chest pain chest heaviness on auscultation, there will be a crept sound, the typical paper sound which you make when you uh, when you uh, press against a lot of hundred papers, you will hear this crept sounds which will be heard or you are trying to bite a, a simple papad or a simple uh, wafer, that sound which occurs, cut, 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 that sound will be heard in the lungs and that can give you an inside idea that it is a pulmonary edema. Along with that, you will have uh, other signs which will be seen as... Uh, the JVP will be raised, The uh, there will be edema, bilateral pedal edema, the leg edema will be there, the facial puffiness will be there, which will also corroborate with the pulmonary edema causes. Pulmonary edema is, itself is a lot of secretions which are coming out from the vessels itself and they collected in the alveoli. The alveoli has a surface tension or a surfactant that this prevents the, you know, the, maintains the surface tension. Now what happens, the fluid gets collected inside the, the entire alveoli. So this is the alveoli. This is the, uh, you know, branches of the alveoli. Now, the alveoli has this surface area, which has a surface sur surfactant. On the surfactant, normally allows the exchange of gases from O2, CO2. But if the surfactant has a lot of fluid or a lot of uh, pulmonary edema or pulmonary fluid, which is present, gets collected inside it, there is decrease in the O2, CO2 exchange. And thus, the patient becomes breathless and decreased saturation. For that, you can put the patient on Lasix and all, which will help to reduce the pulmonary edema. Along with that, the infective causes are also treated with the help of Lasix or uh, furosemide, in which the uh, edema is because of the infection, which has already damaged the myocardium and causing the back pressures or fluid to collect in the uh, alveoli. The uh, pulmonary edema occurs because of the cardiac causes. We'll go for a 2D echo. We'll go for a USG. Uh, you can go for a USG also, which gives which is called as focus point of care ultrasound which is done itself in the ICU. Get a USG, put a focus, and you'll get an idea that it has pulmonary edema or infection or it is effusion. And along with that, you can go for a chest CT scan, which will also give you an idea of pulmonary edema. Mostly 2D is done, which gives a perfect uh, idea about it. A chest X-ray is done, a CT scan is done. These are small investigations which are done usually in the hospital can diagnose the pulmonary edema itself. For example, I take a case of 30-year-old person uh, who is having a dilated cardiomyopathy, which is a dilated heart, about 10% or 15% of heart is working. Normally, it is 63%, 64% of the ejection fraction. It is 10 to 15% or 20%. Suddenly, the patient went to the bathroom and he wanted to take a dump and he took uh, he was performing his tools. But suddenly, he got pressure and it ob ob objectified his heart and the heart went into pressure. The patient may land up into the uh, sudden breathlessness and may be intubated for this. Also, the pH go down to 6.9. The PCO2 is also normal. The, P the PO2 has gone down. You would think that it is some infection or some acute respiratory distress syndrome characterized by infection. And you would try to step up the antibodies, but that is not the case. You have to understand the situation, understand the history, and then go forward with treating the patient for proper um, furosemide, which is uh, lacilactone furosemide or Lasix, which helps to remove the excess amount of fluid from the body via urine. You have to collect a folies also because there, there's going to be a lot of mixturation or, or urine going to be a lot, a lot of urine is going to be passed. And along with that, you can give him anti-hypertensives if there are so. 
and that will instead indeed help that pulmonary edema to go down and uh, the patient will feel better after 3 to 4 hours if the patient is intubated or may require an iv support or non invasive ventilation so 4 hours to 6 hours is enough for a non invasive ventilation for a pulmonary edema it settles the patient much faster without non uh, without any niv support or only on o2 support so niv support uh, intubation sos and along with that in lasix can be given to the patient 